Chinese gemstone carvings are famous around the world, but when and how was this exquisite art tradition developed? From June 2016 to August 2017, the Metropolitan Museum had an exhibition called Colors of the Universe, Chinese Hardstone Carving in the Qing Dynasty. It showcased around 80 exquisite carvings drawn from the Met's own collection. Hardstone carving is one of the oldest arts in China, dating back to the 5th century BC. Hard stones were not carved on a very large scale until probably the Qing Dynasty. China itself does not have much deposit of hard stones. Most of the hard stones that you see in this show were imported from elsewhere, largely from Europe or part, the other parts of Asia, especially India. The Qing Dynasty was the last dynasty in China, lasting from 1644 to 1911. During the 17th and 18th centuries, successful military campaigns expanded the Chinese territories greatly. Today's map of China fits right into the Qing Dynasty's map. In the Qing Dynasty, it's because of relatively uh, political stability and the, the open up of the Northwest and Southwest. We usually refer them to the Silk, the Silk Road. These hard stones were imported into China in large quantity. The Qing Dynasty was also a time when the imperial family patronized hard stone carving. The imperial patronage was a very important factor that brought about this very large creative age of hard stone carving. Hard stones are semi-precious stones like jade, agate, turquoise, quartz, etc. Usually on the morph scale, they're between six to seven. That means they are much harder than steel. You cannot really carve them. They can only be worked by abrasives. Abrasives are just hard sand. In the Qing Dynasty, before the power tools like what we have today, there was no electricity. So they had a treadle. It's like a sewing machine. When you step on it, the treadle would turn the belt, and the belt would turn the little disc, and that would spin. That's how each of these pieces is made. Many carvings were used as decorations in palaces or as gifts given by emperors to their officials or foreign visitors. Natural fruit and veggies carry symbolic meanings. Pomegranate with its many seeds symbolizes that there are many generations to come. Here you see the pomegranate because it has so many seeds in it. It means there's so many next generations. This is not much different than Western culture, where in medieval times, the pomegranate symbolized fertility. This medieval Dutch tapestry from the 16th century featured a unicorn happily trapped under a pomegranate tree. You can see this double gourd, which is carved of red carnelian, which also shows the Chinese wish, or this auspicious thinking about having many sons. And each little small baby gourd, and it grows on a single vein. It's the same idea about many sons from the same family line. And here, what you see here are three carvings of Buddha's hand. Buddha's hand is actually a fruit, like orange, but it's not edible. It can be used as a Chinese medicine. Portable little treasures are easy to carry around and show off among friends. The Qing Dynasty was ruled by a minority group called the Manchus from Manchuria, northeast of China. The Manchu ancestors were good hunters. The thumb ring was originally used by archers to protect their thumbs, but later became a type of jewelry for men. Snuff bottles were used to contain powdered tobacco, Snuffing tobacco and other powders through the nose can feel refreshing and open up congested sinuses. It was very popular during the 18th century. My favorite piece is this very little one made of white agate. 
looks like an animal turning its head, and this is actually the natural part of this stone. Decorating carved pieces with other materials is evidence of foreign influences. For example, what you see here is a horse carrying books or Buddhist sutras, and a, an elephant carrying a vase on top. It also shows the influence of Indian art. Because the way of decorating the surface of jade with other stones is a technique employed by Indian jade covers. Many precious materials are not pure. They contained blemishes of color or other materials. Chinese artists used clever design to turn natural color and material changes into the highlights of a carved piece. You can see that this little carving, it shows three candied jujube days with peanuts. Part of it is translucent, part of it is opaque. This opaque part and has a very rough surface, and that's the opaque part of the stone. So here you could see the very clever design of the artist. What you see here is a brush holder or flower holder, which is made of chalcedony. It's a very delicate scene of trees and bamboos moving the wind against a translucent background. Today, this ancient carving art is not lost in China. With modern power tools and ingenious designs, many masterpieces are created for the public to enjoy.